This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. joining me for another episode of the bring back soul music podcast my special guest today is a songwriting duo performing duo from denver colorado geo and angelis how are you guys Hello. doing today? hi good good how about yourself i'm great welcome to the bring back soul music podcast thank you so much we're super excited to be here thank you yeah I'm thank you so much for having us you. this is yeah, the first time you. i've interviewed two guests at the same time so Oh, nice. Yeah, That's good. Keep my fingers crossed and hopefully this goes good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got some information from your team and you guys have an interesting story. Um, I enjoy reading it. I thought it may, I thought when I initially read, I thought this would make a great book. <laughs> so um, nice. you guys we do thought music, about which, that is, which is good too. You guys have a new single out called Forever. <laughs> We're going to try to get into that a little bit later, but before we do that, as always, um, and Halise, we'll start with you. Tell us about yourself. Well, I was born and raised in Dominican Republic um, to a merengue singer dad and a dentist mom. Um, we were always involved in church, and um, most of my family always really sang at church. So it was, it was. I was always around music. Um, and even at school, I went to a private Catholic school in Dominican Republic, and um, we did a lot of singing at church in school too. Um, so I, I was pretty pretty much very active in, in the music industry ever since I was little. Okay, and uh, I'm sorry, did you say your family was involved in music too, or? Yeah, yep, so my family has always been around music and singing, uh, my uncle, knows how to play so many instruments. He taught me how to play guitar um, at a summer camp that he had. So he said, I'll teach you how to play guitar and then you you help me take care of the kids. <laughs> you know, make sure that works. And I ended up not really liking it. I stayed for like a week and a half and I said, well, thank you for the basics. I don't really like taking care of kids. I gotta go. <laughs> So it was that. And then after that, I moved to Florida when I was about 14 years old um, with my mom and my little brother. Um, and we, honestly, it, it was really hard getting here and, and um, getting used to the system and everything, but it was really, really exciting to me because I knew I always had big dreams and um, I always wanted to try it out here in America, you know, the, the land of the dreams. Okay. Now, when you say you want to try it out, are you referring to music or just living in America in general? Um, I've always belonged in the entertainment industry. Um, I, I have recently graduated from radio and TV broadcasting. Um, so I honestly, I, everything about the entertainment industry really excites me and uh, being behind the camera, in front of the camera, lighting, whatever it is, uh, editing, I, I, I love it all. So I guess just being in the industry at all, <laughs> I just really wanted to somehow get into it. Okay, gotcha. Uh, sounds good. Okay, Gio. Tell us about, uh, tell us about Gio. So, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. My name is Gio, by the way, <laughs> if you didn't catch that yet. Uh, but I was born in, and raised in the small town of Humacao, Puerto Rico. Um, and I uh, wasn't really involved like that in music, per se, but my grandfather, he is himself is a musician. So, there's this um, thing called parrandas in Puerto Rico, which is a tradition. Um, and most, most of the time it's during Christmas. So I would go out and sing with him. And um, that's, you know, I, I always loved music since I have memory. Um, so that was when I was 12 years old, I uh, started going to church and I realized that I like to sing in, in public. So they made me the uh, worship team leader uh, for the youth. Um, and then we moved from Puerto Rico um, and uh, 
I was uh, in South Florida for uh, seven years, I believe. Um, and then through that time, I was also a youth leader, um, a, a worship leader for the youth group um, in church until I was 18. And I kind of parted away from church um, at that moment. Um, and I became kind of uh, musical, mu musically sta uh, stagnant, I would say. Um, but then I, I just wanted to do better things and I, I didn't want to go back to Puerto Rico. I didn't feel alive there, um, just considering I moved there when I was young, when I was 13. And then Florida, I was just over Florida. So I was like, why not Denver? And um, a year before I moved to Denver, I actually met Angie um, at uh, a Starbucks. I worked at Starbucks <laughs> um, and that's how we met. And that's where we met. Okay. Now, that's that's the part I find interesting that you guys met at uh, Starbucks working. Um, how did the uh, how did the conversation go when you said, "Hey, you know, uh, let's write this great song called Forever together, and uh, this will be a <laughs> new one." Didn't how, start there. How, how it didn't did it start How there. did it start? So I would say I, I would say I think he knew I was involved in music somehow because I. The, the theater that I used to perform at, the downtown theater um, in Naples, Florida. Yeah, um, it was like two blocks away from Starbucks. Literally, it I was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I used to go in before rehearsals, during rehearsals, after rehearsals. Um, I used to rehearse my lines there, music. Um, and I had this little spot right at the, um, it, it was kind of like a little bar sitting. It was pretty perfect for, the bartender and the person as well um and so i think just being close and i yeah. don't know just seeing each I, other every time i think i remember that like i was there was a song playing like on the on the radio or with, like the playlist that we use and i remember I, I like sang and then she like was like oh my god like you can sing and then, like that's we became close literally just by that like just because we were both musically involved and she made me a bracelet like a friendship bracelet and then here we are, like four or five years later, in Denver, Colorado, and I I met um, Wes, which Bill Simmons, which he's he's our manager, um, and I actually found him through Craigslist, uh, which is kind of funny, if you ask me. But um, uh, I contacted him, and I was like, "Look, I'm I'm trying to make music. What do what do you, what can you do for me?" And he was like, "Let's do it. Let's just do it." And then I told him, I was like, "I have this friend, Angeles. Like, she's super great." So from the first day that I met Wes, I I brought up Angeles and. From there on, like uh, about a year after I met him, we we sat down and we uh, received the beat from uh, Jaira, which he he's uh, he lives in Florida, um, and to my understanding, um, and then he uh, played us the beat at the studio, and Angie and I just looked at each other and we knew this was gonna be our song, and we just we just wrote it right there and then. <laughs> okay. Totally, we we heard the beat and we just it clicked. We were like, wow, this beat us right now like it needs yeah. to happen okay now um when you guys met and you guys found that you guys both had a love for music did um and when you guys decided to kind of team up did one person need to be more convinced than the other you both were like <laughs> you know were you both in the same place at the same time or i think we both were a hundred percent in when it comes to music it's just what we love, it's what we do. Um, no matter where we went, we were still gonna pursue music wherever we ended up. So whether That's it was right. together or separately, you, you both were on a path to do music. Yeah, yeah. That's we right, and we'd like, rather it, yeah. If she knew, like Angie, we always have a deal like, oh, if you make it before me, like I'm gonna bring you in with me and like vice versa. And like, this just happened yeah. to be a project that we're just, you know, working on and we've been working on for, for about two years, I think. And um, I, I think it's it's pretty cool, it's coming along. Okay, now this is uh, Forever is your debut single, correct? Yeah. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, is there an EP following or what, um, what's next for? Um, <laughs> that's right. So. We have, um, so that's our debut single because that's our go-to beautiful song, but we do have an EP out. It's called Forever EP. Super easy to find since our debut single is Forever. Um, we do have five other songs other than Forever that are very mixed, Latin, um, different vibes. You feel like you're in a different uh, atmosphere when you listen. It's from my understanding from what I hear from our fans and our 
our team and the, whoever gets to listen really has a, a positive reaction to our music and that's what I really love that that we we were so passionate at the moment of making it and it's what we enjoy doing that I love when people also enjoy listening to it right right and that being said I feel like yeah like I, I don't want to say there's going to be an EP following because um, I, I don't want to like say that Um, but we are <laughs> working on a lot of music at the studio right now um, and I do believe that um, we are uh, in plans of, of releasing some of this music as well uh, but in regards to an EP itself I'm not exactly sure it may be an album who knows we, we do have something we do have something coming so just stay, stay tuned and listen to what we have forever EP out um, listen on all platforms please reach out to us let us know what you also think <laughs> okay So I think that qualifies as a tease. So just hang on. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about forever. Um, now, I'm sorry. Did you say that took you guys about two years to, to write or how long did it take? Oh, no, no, no. Um, the project itself, we were working for about two years forever. We actually wrote it on that same day. If I, I think we recorded, I think we wrote it and recorded most of it. Part of it. Mm -hmm. And then the second uh, session, we finished completely the song and just, you know, kind of like detailing everything here and there. Um, but I would say it took less than 24 hours oh, to wow. write. Okay. We, do have, we do have songs or let's say beats that we definitely have to sit on and work on a little more, elaborate a bit more. But I feel like Forever was just so, it was like an intuition. We just knew exactly what we were doing with this song. Yeah, it just came to us. Like we just... You know, I, we did, but love is just such a, a common topic to sing about that we wanted to bring a different aspect of love on when somebody's not 100% ready to com be committed in a relationship. And that's what we wanted to portray in, in this in the song itself. And that's what Forever is about. Okay. Now, uh, Forever is already out. How long has it been out? been out a couple months February, now. Right? February, right? February. It came out in the beginning of February. So, mm -hmm. Febrero, Marzo, April, Mayo, Junio, four months. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that the um, the reaction people have to it, I know I love it. I thought it was a, I thought it was a great song. Um, we're going to get into it just a little bit, but how has it been received by your fans and um, the public in general? Um, I think, I think it's been, It's so magical every time I, I get a response from someone that has seen it or even when I get to show it to someone um, on the spot. I remember, when was it? Three days ago? I have a really good relationship with my mailman at work um, and he, we never just, we never knew, uh, we never talked to each other about what aspirations we had in life. and. He came in the other day and he's just leaving and we're talking and I don't know how it just comes up that I sing and he's super excited. He's like, oh, do you have anything? And I really didn't think he knew that I really had like a whole music video for it. And it was funny because he went back to, to his car and he came back and he's like, girl, you can sing. <laughs> It was so funny, and, and his reaction, he's like, I, I love the R&B feel to it. There's just so much that I feel when I when I hear it, when I listen to it, and it's it's just really magical because everything just came together so well, even at the music video. Like, we were freezing, by the way. It yeah, was it was so cold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, did you say it was a delivery driver? Here's the mail. The mail oh. delivery, yeah, yeah. He's a USPS driver. <laughs> okay, because you know somebody packages was late because he was in a car looking to looking at your video. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, right. So, growing up in um, the Dominican or in the U.S. and also Puerto Rico, who were some of the artists that um, that you looked up to besides maybe your family and who else were you? Who else uh, inspired you? I would say since a very young age, uh, there, there's just so much that I get inspiration from. Since you know, since it, since I grew up in in a Spanish-speaking country, and then I would also listen to Radio Disney. Um, and I think Radio Disney had a lot of the songs that were really in in the United States. And it was just really interesting to me from going from 
a Spanish merengue to, you know, R&B or, you know, it, it was really, really fun to just listen to and play around with. But in general, I would say Rihanna has always been there for me. <laughs> Rihanna is such a big inspiration. I love Sia. I love the way she composes. I love her yeah. house music. We love, we love mm -hmm. Sia for sure. Yes. Sia is definitely a huge inspiration of ours. Um, I would say uh, Belinda <laughs> in Spanish. I know, I was gonna say Belinda. She was uh, she was around through childhood. Like we wanted to be Belinda growing up, you know. Absolutely. Like, and also like Mark Anthony for me. Like when so when I like people hear like my song or something like that, or, like my close friends that I haven't like songs that I haven't released, and they like listen to me. They're like, oh my gosh, you sound like Mark Anthony, and I'm like, oh, that's like the best compliment <laughs> they could ever get me. I'm like, thank you. Oh my gosh. Or like um, uh, Luis Fonsi, I look up into to Luis, look up to Luis Fonsi a lot. Um, he's been in the industry for a long time, um, in the Spanish industry, and then he did a crossover. I mean, I'm sure you know who Luis Fonsi is, um, but he he's definitely someone that I I envision myself being like in the industry. I would say. Okay, uh, great. Um, okay, so we're gonna pause here, and we're gonna uh, attempt to play forever. And this is Gio and Anne Halise with forever. Enjoy. We'll continue our episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com Now, Back to our conversation. All right, we're back. Uh, Gio and Halis, uh, it's a great song, Forever. And you yeah. guys seem so perfectly matched, too. Your voices kind of, I don't know, they just blend. Um, but you guys you. also did recently a virtual prom, uh, right. which coincides with everybody being locked down for COVID. Tell us about that. Was it? Was it was it weird doing a um, a prom with nobody there? I'm not even gonna lie. Like at first, I was just like virtual prom. Like, what are we even doing? Like, I honestly did not want to do it at all. But then I was like, who you know, idea well, was like, it? Who, who idea was it? It was actually, I believe, it was Danielle's idea. It was our PR person, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it was Danielle's idea, and I was just like, at first, I didn't like turn it down or anything because any idea is a great idea, you know, especially if it's not coming from me. Like, of course, I'm gonna be open to it. But you know, I was mindful of everything that's going on around the world and everything, and I'm like, you know, this can bring joy to people, you know, even if it's a little bit of people who watch it, like even if it's just my family members, you know, I just want to spread the positivity, and that's well, that was my mentality going into that virtual. Okay. Yeah, um, it was, um, as soon as they brought it up, I was a little skeptical, of course, as well. Um, but I thought it was a great idea because I didn't have my own prom either. Um, and I just thought, hell, let's invite three friends and, you know, let's have a little prom party ourselves there, um, entertain a couple people online and maybe just as well get some wings and also party at the place as well. Uh. And that's honestly, that's what we do. Like, we literally, that's literally what we do on a daily anyway. So it's just like, you know, I love the fact that we could like bring in to people. Like, I, I like that fact that we could bring to the table our personalities. You know, it's not just a lot of people just see a face and they don't really put a personality to them, you know. And I feel like this virtual prom like gave us a chance to showcase our personality and just let know people what, what we do on a daily basis, really. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It was really fun. And also having Paul there DJing, he's such a great DJ. He knows exactly what to play. Yeah. Um, he can get you in the mood right quick. And it was really, really fun to do. And we actually had people interacting with us, which was even more surprising to us. And we really liked it. It was, it was, I it. Okay. Now that was a virtual prom, but did you guys, because of all the, you know, the COVID stuff, do you guys see yourself doing more, more things like that online? Absolutely. 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 I think I think it was definitely a start um, for us to really get into it. Um, but I think it would be really fun to incorporate a more of it and um, do more live songs because I loved performing our our, um, our song on acoustic as well. That was really fun. Um, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, that was really cool. El Leo, huh? El Leo, mm -hmm. we can perform it. Yeah. Yeah, and not just prom, too. Like, I mean, like, maybe we can do it for, like, weddings or, like, 
you know, Christmas or Christmas. Christmas. It's just stuff like that. Like you never know, like how for how far we can really take this whole virtual thing. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. right. Um, and you know, you have to, you know, you have to make the most, the best of any situation. And since we're yeah. locked in, yeah, I think it's a great idea. Um, I think you expose more people to it. Mm-hmm. Um, now, we just need to probably set something straight here. Um, you guys are a songwriting duo, performer. You guys are not a couple, right? <laughs> no, no, we're not. not. Okay. Angeles is. Um, she's my. She's like my sister. Honestly, yeah. like. We live together, we're roommates, we are literally in each other's lives every day, and I would literally do anything for Angeles. Except okay. I didn't know you guys were roommates. <laughs> how, did, how did that work out? You guys work and... Yeah, so um, after we met um, at Starbucks, we had a friendship for about a year, and then he said, hey, I'm moving, you should probably move with me next uh, next year and I said what because I was a senior in high school and I'm like there's just no way I'm gonna move out of state and it was just a crazy idea to me next year comes and I'm like wow Naples is not it Naples it by the way Naples is a retirement town it's just if you have it's so many beautiful aspirations, but it's not it if you have dreams aspirations and a lot of big dreams it's gonna feel like a box to you so I'll just say that and well he moved and um, he said that he really liked it and we could see what opportunities we can find here and I said yes I am definitely moving with you yeah. and that's it yeah. okay. sure. Gio um, let me ask you um, why why Denver because when you look when you think about music you don't actually Denver doesn't have <laughs> my mind why why Denver yeah. Colorado I mean it's a great city I love it but why Denver so I, at first, um, I had a friend that lived here and um, I came to visit her and I was trying to get out of Florida for a long time, like, because of what Angie said, like, Naples was just not, not the place to be at. Um, and I was actually doing some recording there at, uh, in Naples um, that I, the studio actually, like, shut down and I lost all of my recordings. Like, I don't even know where my recordings are, but... I was, I just had a bad experience when it came to that, so I was just like, you know what, let me just go to Denver. And I didn't come here with the intention of actually recording music, but I knew that pursuing music was something that I always saw in my future, um, no matter where I ended up at. So I decided to make that a possibility in Denver as well. And here we are, you know, like with a whole EP from Denver, Colorado. That's right. And I think when you have a a good feeling about something, you should definitely go for it. Um, Life has... Big shots and small shots. So sometimes you gotta take your big shots and see where it takes you. Cause sometimes you should trust your gut and just see if if you if you're consistent with your passion um, and, and, yes. you, and you try to pursue it every day, something will come your way. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me step back and um, you said you are recording in Naples and you lost all your recordings. Are you two? Uh, are you guys a independent artists or are you guys signed to a label or i guess no, we also record music in, in in naples as well um and mostly what i did i think i was mostly experimenting and i'm so glad i got to meet a really good friend of mine that really knew what he was doing when it came to recording and um he had a mic and we really could experiment when it came to that um i just think it just naples really It just yeah. wasn't, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and then Naples, like you were, I mean, in Naples, you have a bunch of independent artists as it is. So, That's you know, true. like you, there's not like a, like a label or anything like that that you can sign to. I mean, at least not to my knowledge. Uh, but right now, I mean, we're not, we record a mint audio, but we're not signed to the studio or to any label. Um, I would consider ourselves independent artists. Uh, we do have management and all of that. We have a big team um, behind us, so that's always really good, but I would consider myself an independent artist. Okay. Where can uh, where can people purchase your music? Um, all, all the platforms. <laughs> uh, you can do uh, YouTube, you can do uh, Apple Music, Spotify. You can even buy it on Amazon if you don't want to. If you don't want the whole EP, you can just buy it, like buy it forever by itself, you know. And it's literally on all platforms, so anything you can think of. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, great. And you guys are real. Are you guys active in the uh, social media as well? Yes. So my social media at and on Instagram, it's gonna be um, at Real Angeles. 
S, so two S's. So R-E-A-L-A-N-G-E-L-E-S-S. -E -E um, yeah. And I think that's also it for Twitter. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. I forgot, I was like, oh, I have a Twitter too. <laughs> okay. Um, I My social media, my Instagram is geofficial underscore, underscore, so it's G-I-O, F F I C I A L underscore underscore. And then it's the same on Twitter, but with an extra underscore because apparently there's too many official geos out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. But you're uh, the official official. <laughs> right. Okay. And we'll have links to uh, awesome. and geos uh, information, social media sites, as well as um, a link to forever on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the show notes. Um, anything else you guys want to add before we uh, cut this interview? No, I don't think so. We're just so grateful that you are taking the time to meet with us. You know, we're upcoming artists. So this mm -hmm. is a good opportunity for us. Yeah, yeah. no problem. We had a, a mix up, I guess, a couple weeks ago when we were supposed to do this. And, um, but you know, time differences and I guess we got mixed up or whatever. But I'm glad yeah, we, we were appreciate you working with us. I'm sorry, what's that? No, I just said we appreciate you working with us. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, you know, our, our, our platform here is to expose, um, you know, the world to uh, up and coming artists and, uh, nice. you know, who, who putting out great music. So that's great. Um, Angelis and Gio, yes. I appreciate you taking the time today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, if you guys. Yeah, if you guys oh. like this interview, please, please go check us out on uh, um, all platforms and please listen to it. If you like it, please let us know, comment below, and we'll get back to you. Um, we're super excited to take you on our journey. Um, and thank you so much for watching. All right. Thank also, you. Be on, the, be on the lookout for more music from Gio and Annalise. <laughs> That's um, right. Let me ask you a question before we go. Um, you guys are a team and you guys do a lot of writing. Uh, you perform together. Do um, you guys do anything separately? Like where you perform songs that you say, well, maybe this is not maybe a, a good duet song, but Gio, oh. you might want to take this one, or at least you might want to tackle this We're one. We're definitely working on our on our independent music as well. And it's yeah, well, funny when I tell you we have a lot of music, we have a lot of music. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right, and and what I like about it is that um, we keep each other on the loop about what our even our um, our songs are. Uh, so my personal songs I show to Gio right away, and he has an opinion. So I try to incorporate that as well. So when I say he's part of my team, still he's totally part of the team. Yeah. Um, even when I'm when I'm making my own music, um, but we definitely have music. Gio's music is super spectacular as well. We can wait to show you. It's definitely um, a lot more personal and a lot more yeah. of us. Um, That's true. And Angie's music bomb. Like just wait, <laughs> just wait. Okay. Well, I can't wait to uh, I can't wait to um, to hear more. Um, one more question, and I'll promise to let you. Yeah, please. <laughs> no worries. Um, because of. COVID-19, obviously, you know, performing and um, all that kind of thing is kind of pushed back a little bit, maybe to 2021, they're saying. Um, are you guys just going to release singles? Um, I, I think you said you got more songs. Um, is there a schedule, I guess what I'm saying, uh, or to release new music? Like some artists want to do a song every month. Or every to be honest, when it comes to a schedule itself, we actually don't really know. Um, we don't, that's more like the teams. Um, they like pretty much can tell like when's the best time to release something. Um, and that's pretty much what they tell us is to be patient. It's <laughs> right. what they tell us every time. Um, but when it comes to a specific schedule, we are never like not usually on the loop, I wouldn't say. And I think you'll never, you'll never really get to know a specific schedule because you never know what the world's going to look like. Um, Correct. Yeah, I mean, so, so I think... 2020 for you. <laughs> right, specifically 2020. Right. Um, you never know what's going to come your way. So I think... Um, the way that they handle it is just seeing how it goes and let's just go ahead and give people a really who knows a really nice single for summer okay, okay well we don't know let's let's see let's see what happens <laughs> <laughs> all right and i might want to add too that there is a video for forever as well um and that's on youtube correct yes uh-huh it has okay. it just like we were just trying to get 
you know the the support that we need and we're receiving it and we see it on on you know the views and the subscribers and stuff and we just love the support from everyone yeah it's it's really interesting seeing where our views even come from where where people are listening from people from australia we were, listening mm -hmm. to us. i think we were on the top 40 uh in chicago for for a little bit when he came really? out um yeah, yeah it's really really fun uh to see uh the demographic of who's listening and what's happening um i love it i i love that anyone can enjoy it well, good luck, you two. I mean, I appreciate you coming on the show, and yeah. you guys are doing great, great music. So hopefully, the world can get exposed to um, all the all the things you're doing. I really appreciate you take appreciate you taking the time today. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No we problem. appreciate you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Anne Hillis. No, I was just gonna say thank you so much, and and everyone, please keep listening to Bring Back Soul Music. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Thank you for the plug. Mm -hmm. Um, that's Ed Halise and Gio on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guests, Gio and Anhelis. You can find out more about Gio and Anhelis on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.